Ah yes, crosswind landings, the bane of every pilot student. Landing itself is hard enough, landing with the wind blowing across the runway really is somewhat of another challenge. Today I'm going to explain to you how it works. If you like the content, please make sure to subscribe, it helps me out a lot. Now let's get into it, welcome to Airspace Explained. First, let's look on how a normal landing works. There's more to it than one might think. To land, one must fly a straight path to the landing zone at a very stable rate of descent, usually about 700 feet per minute. This results in a glide angle called the glide path of about 3 degrees, which is considered ideal. In a perfect world without up or down drafts, wind gusts and so on, this will be done at a fixed speed and a fixed thrust setting. In the real world, these values have to be constantly adjusted slightly to remain on the ideal path. As one reaches a height of 30 to 50 feet above the runway, the nose of the plane is lifted ever so slightly and gradually, while the thrust of the engines is reduced to idle and the plane settles onto the runway at a very small rate of descent. The touchdown should occur in a given zone that is rather small, usually one has 5 to 7 seconds to complete the landing, otherwise it is considered as too short or too long to be safe. Crosswind landings add one more component to the mix, wind from the side. Every plane has a certification that states how much crosswind it can take at the maximum. For airliners, this is around 35 to 40 knots, which is about 40 miles per hour or 70 kilometers per hour. Quite a lot, actually. To approach the runway, one must fly the plane at an angle to the approach axis, so one does not get pushed to the side. Imagine yourself trying to cross a river. If you swim perpendicular to the stream, you will end up on the other side of the river, but further downstream. The crosswind landing itself is a great act of coordination. It is actually possible to touch down with the nose into the wind and not pointing down the runway. Even though the nose is pointed in the wrong direction, the direction of movement points down the axis of the runway and this momentum straightens the plane as soon as it physically touches the runway. This type of landing is referred to as a crab landing since you come in sideways like a crab, figuratively speaking. It is a safe kind of landing, but it puts a lot of stress on the landing gear since it applies side loads to the tires and struts. Also, for passengers, it's not very comfortable as they are yanked around on touchdown. Instead, most pilots opt for a so-called decraft landing. In this type of landing, the pilot uses the plane's rudder on the tail to point the plane down the runway in the last seconds before the landing. Since this accelerates one of the wings due to the yawing motion, more lift is generated on one side of the plane and also the wind now starts to blow the plane off path. This is of course not desirable in the last seconds before one wants to settle down on the runway and therefore a correction is needed, which is applied with the plane's ailerons. The plane is rolled slightly into the wind to counteract the forces trying to bring the plane off course. Also, at the same time, one needs to lift the nose of the plane gradually and reduce the thrust at the correct second. So in essence, the choreography in this example with the strong wind from the right goes like this. Push left rudder foot pedal slightly, bank plane to the right with control stick, pull back on control stick, reduce thrust and keep plane on correct path, adjusting foot pressure, sideways stick pressure and back pressure for the landing. Yes, crosswind landings are hard and no two landings are the same. But if you get them just right, they are very rewarding. So the next time you land in bad weather, you know what your pilot of the day has to deal with. If you have any other topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments down below. Also make sure to subscribe if you liked it. See you in the next one.